took the plastic wrap off, but I haven't opened the box until right now. I just didn't want to throw my address out into the internet. These are the fittings. They're usable. They're not fantastic, but like they'll they'll do their job. It's fine. This is the neck, which inexplicably already has the fingerboard glued onto it. I chose this kit specifically because I knew it had a maple fingerboard, which is at least serviceable as opposed to whatever mystery wood they might be using in other ones. This scroll definitely needs to be reworked. It's got about as much personality as the guys that used to bully me in high school, so I'm going to fix that. And then here is the body, also inexplicably already assembled. It doesn't look terrible. The arching's a bit clunky. Oh, she thick. She thick. And there's no saddle either, so I gotta add one of those, but that's fine. There's also bad rib joint, but that'll be sawn out for the neck mortise and tendon, so it doesn't really matter. On the other hand, this... trash. So that was like a 55 second initial impressions that I'd posted on TikTok, but I figured I'd go a little more in depth in the different parts and components of this DIY kit. Um, using only the contents of the kit, plus $100 in tools and materials from a regular old hardware store, and also a better set of strings, a better bridge, and a saddle. Uh, I'm going to turn this into a decent or better violin and giving it away to one of my TikTok followers who would benefit from it. I'll start with the neck. This is not a good neck. It's um, pretty typical CNC fare. It's very oblong, very oval shaped. And the fingerboard came already attached. I removed that because the gluing surfaces were presumably not good. And I was right. There's big gouges and dings and this hasn't even been smoothed at all. It is a surprisingly decent maple fingerboard. I chose this kit specifically because I knew that I had a maple fingerboard and that's at least serviceable. There are a lot of mystery woods that um, some of the Chinese factories use just because they look dark and look kind of like ebony, but then they end up being overly soft and wearing too quickly. This is actually a pretty good sugar maple. Um, I usually do a, a test on a fingerboard to see whether or not it'll be hard enough where I see whether or not I can ding it with just a coin. I usually use a nickel. And I could not, so this I'm actually going to keep as part of the kit. Um, this I'm going to rework and then properly join the fingerboard too. The nut seems to be dogwood, which is actually a really good, really hard wood as well. I might stain the fingerboard a little bit darker, just so it's got more visual interest and sort of more um, contrast with the rest of the violin. But I'm still going to use this. It, it's fine. It, it'll do its job. It's not going to wear out on you too quickly or anything. The body was interesting, because the top came already attached, which is uh, atypical. And the plates are very thick, but that's fine. I knew I was going to have to re-graduate it anyway. Um, the arching of the back is unusually steep. Like, this is just a bulky boy, so I might take that in a little bit from the outside in addition to thinning from the inside, because that back is like eight or nine millimeters thick at the center, and I usually aim for about six at the center. Um, but yeah, the purfling channel's okay. Obviously, the neck mortise wasn't cut in, so I marked that off to scribe it in, and I'm going to saw that out and then attach the neck properly. Uh, inexplicably, there's two different types of maple used on this kit. The back and the neck are both sugar maple, and then the ribs are red maple for some reason. It's not a big deal, like it's going to be perfectly fine um, structurally, and it's going to not really impact the sound in any meaningful way. It's just going to be a bit of a pain to color match the varnish across the entire instrument. The spruce top was actually surprisingly adequate. It's got fairly straight grain. The edge work has been sort of nicked to hell, but it's nothing I can't scrape out. Um, and there's a little mineral streak in the top but I can probably scrape that out, and if I can't, it'll be covered up with the varnish anyway, so it won't be a glaring sort of uh, oversight. And the fittings included in the kit are not spectacular, as I expected. They're a regular Chinese jujube, or Chinese boxwood, as it's sometimes called. Um, it's a hill-style tailpiece. It's going to do its job. I'm going to hollow out the back because it's quite hefty. But, you know, it'll work. The pegs are uh, basically as short as usable, so I've got to be really careful in fitting these because by the time it goes into the peg box, it's sticking out to an appropriate length, but there's no wiggle room at all, so you've got to be very vigilant when you're actually fitting the pegs on this. A run-of-the-mill Sacconi-style tail gut. It's actually pretty flexible, so I'm probably going to use that as well. End pin is fine and normal. Um, chin rest, regular Guarneri style, same in, in uh, Jujube or Chinese boxwood. Not remarkable by any means, but they'll all do their jobs. And the sound post blank is actually surprisingly decent. Um, it's got three grain lines on it, and it's, it's a very well-defined spruce, and that sort of surprised me, because I was expecting, like, just an off-cut milled into a vague cylinder. But this is actually a pretty decent blank, so I'm going to use that even. And this is basically just for the luthiers, but look at that sound post. It's not fantastic, but, like, for a $55 DIY violin kit, 
that's pretty adequate. The bridge, on the other hand, absolute garbage. This is cut at a really weird angle in the maple, so there's no real visible medullary rays. The grain runs in the correct direction, but it's very soft, very flexible, and not appealing, and it'll end up warping pretty quickly under string tension, probably within like a month or even less, so I'm going to get a proper bridge blank for it and use that instead. But yeah, I'm basically going to take this kit, use strings that aren't the god-awful seal ones that were included. These have not corroded much, which is surprising, but still not going not gonna to touch these. And then, yeah, I'm going to finish it in just a regular boiled linseed oil finish um, that you can just pick up from a hardware store, do a reassembly using hide glue that you can pick up from pretty much any woodworking shop. And using $100 worth of tools and materials, you can pick up at hardware stores, or woodworking shops, or even yard sales. I'm using mostly tools that I already have, but I'm limiting myself in terms of the scope and gauge of them. I'm not using anything highly specialized, I'm just using things that you could pick up yourself for 100 bucks if you had absolutely nothing. And I'll be converting this into a perfectly playable, uh, at the very least decent, if not downright good instrument and then giving it away to one of my TikTok followers for my 5,000 follower milestone. I'll be documenting the rebuild process here on YouTube, might do little snippets throughout on TikTok, but the one minute time limit is, is pretty um, restrictive in terms of producing content that's interesting and engaging and also contains any useful information. But yeah, I'm actually pleasantly surprised by this kit and it arrived intact. <laughs>